Thanks for checking out this review video. So this is for Creep Show Season 2. Specifically, this is for Episode 1 of Creep Show Season 2. My plan here is to do what I did with the first season, which is review every single episode, which includes two stories for each, probably about 25 minutes each, if they end up being like the first season and like the first episode of the second season. Uh, I'm also planning at, that, uh, at the end to do a wrap-up like I did for the first season of my ranking of all the stories from season two. And then I think after that, I'm going to also do a ranking, like a full ranking that will include season one, season two, and all the special stories that have been done as well. So that's my plan, just letting you know. So what is going on with episode one of season two? I will say right off the bat, it's good to see the creep back again. I've, I definitely enjoyed season one, but it was one of those situations where it felt kind of half and half on the stories, where half the stories it was like, eh, and the other half I was like, oh, that's good, I enjoy that. So, if episode one of season two is any indicator of where we're headed, better, even better than season one, hopefully that continues. Uh, one of the stories really enjoyed, the other story enjoyed quite a bit. So, yeah, I'm going to talk about that, but I cannot give synopses, so I can't do that for any of the creep show stories, because, I mean... I was asked to, but also it makes sense, because if I give a synopsis, these are such short stories, they're like 25 minutes a piece, that just a, a quick synopsis can end up giving a lot away, so no synopsis. But I'll tell you the title of the stories. So the first one for episode one of season two is called Model Kid, directed by Greg Nicotero, who also has obviously done a bunch of Walking Dead stuff, that's what he's best known for. Apparently there's also a Walking Dead movie coming, it says in the IMDb credits for him, untitled walking dead movie we'll see uh then for creep show he's he directed the stories gray matter the finger which is one of my favorites survivor type twitterings from the circus of the dead and shapeshifters anonymous which i think is my favorite right now uh it's close between that and the second story of season of episode one of season two just saying Written by John Esposito, who wrote scripts for Graveyard, Shift, Tale of the Mummy, The Walking Dead webisodes, a bunch of those, uh, Night, and then he also did Night of the Paw story from the first season of Creepshow. Uh, this stars, well, it's got a bunch of people in it, but big names, I'm just going to say the, who the big, bigger names are. It's got Kevin Dillon in it, who is in such things as Platoon, The Blob, yes, one of the best remake horror remakes out there and is probably best known as Johnny Drama from Entourage. And he is a delight in this story. Uh, he brings the seriousness to the character that's kind of needed, but he also brings a nice comedic element to it, because that's just kind of how his acting seems to be. At least, I mean, think Entourage if you've seen him in that, or think The Blob. Like, he's got this little bit of a comedic uh, bent to the way he delivers lines. It's just kind of always there, and that's present here. So... There is some comedy to it. There's a little comedy actually baked in. I think that's kind of a theme with just the creep show um, stories in general. They always like to put some light, you know, kind of fun, funny stuff in there. Some are heavier than others. This one's a little bit lighter, but there is that funny stuff to it. Because this one's also kind of emotional. Uh, and I enjoy that aspect of it. So there's some real old horror, uh, old school horror nostalgia that ends up being used in this that's kind of the lead into the story, which I think that you'll see what I mean when you watch it. It it kind of transitions from one part of something that you don't really know what's going on into, into the actual story, and then you're just like, oh, I see how this fits in. And I thought that transition was really cool, really well done, really enjoyed that aspect of it. This speaks a lot to old school horror fans. I'm talking like old, old school horror fans, like, you know, Hammer, uh, Universal Monsters, more Universal Monsters, but, you know, the older school horror fans who really grew up with horror. Before, before horror was all really that cool, was like cool at all, really. I mean, you can kind of glean some of that from the title called Model Kid, M-O-D-E-L. Uh, you'll kind of get it, but... Um, plays heavy on nostalgia, and I like that aspect of it. For that reason, that kind of rolls into the emotional aspect of it, which that's not all the emotional. There's emotional parts of the story, but I think those are integrated pretty well. Um, there's a portion of this that kind of speaks a little bit to how people in the horror community can kind of end up feeling ostracized 
with the rest of the world because of their interest in horror, especially, you know, those older school horror fans before, before horror genre was thought of as being like legitimate or being more popular or more acceptable basically. So, cause it, you know, it takes place in the past. Um, there was a portion of this I personally really connect with, uh, in, in finding kind of distraction and also catharsis in horror films. It's, it's something that's just kind of like said, but it's also shown a little bit in the actual story. So I, I like that aspect of it as well. Uh, solid comedy to this, mainly from Kevin Dillon, like I already said. It's not really, it's not scary or creepy, like at all. Uh, it's just more emotional and kind of fun. And like I said, just packed with that nostalgia to it. Uh, it's well directed, uh, good practical effects to it, and the comic color usage is solid, which, you know, that's a calling card of these stories for Creepshow. They always have, like, these bits that are very bright, have very nice colors, and kind of remind you of a comic book panel, because, duh, it's from Creepshow comic book idea. So anyway, overall, I'm going to give the story Model Kid three stars. That's what I'm going with for that one. It's It's decent. Uh, then we have Public Television of the Dead. Now, this one almost overtook Shapeshifters Anonymous for me for the best. It's very, very close, but not quite there. Uh, directed by Greg Nicotero. Uh, we just talked about him, so I'm not going to go over that stuff. Written by Rob Schraub, which kudos, Rob. Your script for this was very nice. Uh, Rob's written scripts for Monster House. Yes, the Robert Zemeckis film. Uh, wrote a lot for the Sarah Silverman program, which was a funny show. So it gives you an idea of how much comedy will be baked into this one. A good amount. Uh, and he did the creep show story Bad Wolf Down. I wasn't big on that one. It was okay. That's kind of like more middle of the pack for me. But this, the writing on this script, very nice. And there is some nostalgia baked into this one. I, that's kind of just the thing in general with the creep show stories. In addition to always having, you know, some sort of nostalgic element from past horror franchises or movies or whatever, they also have a lot of little Easter eggs in each story. I don't really look for those to, to pull them out, but on a second viewing, I'll probably do that. Um, I'm not going to make a video about it, but it, it's fun to just rewatch. So just know that they're in there if you didn't already, which a lot of people, if you watch season one, you know that. Um, stars Ted Raimi. He's not the only person, but he's the bigger name. And I love Ted Raimi's acting. He, his delivery, he's always got this kind of like, just kind of like offhand, smooth, normal guy, but kind of funny delivery for his lines. He's a really good actor, and he does an excellent job in this. I think what he brings to this particular story in numerous ways is awesome. So very good. Obviously, he's best known for things like, all of the Evil Dead films that he's been in, Drag Me to Hell, Midnight Meat Train he was in, Wishmaster he was in apparently, very small part. Also some small parts in Blood Rage, who knows Blood Rage, probably a lot of people if you like The Last Drive-In, Candyman, Shocker, stuff like that. So he's done a lot, he has a ton of acting credits. Uh, there's a pretty funny moment I actually didn't see coming in this film and a funny show reference that's very, very recognizable in this one. Lots of references that are very recognizable to actual horror fans and a reference that's not horror related, but everyone should get because it's, well, you'll see what I mean. And it's, it's pretty wonderful. There's something introduced that makes you say, oh, hell yes, here we go. Because that's what I said in my mind when this thing popped up. In the episode, I was like, oh, hell yes, here we go. Because it definitely marks the point where things get very fun, very crazy, and wonderful. Uh, they went pretty big on the practical effects for this one, especially in comparison to the model kid story. Obviously, that's a great thing. I love it. They, it's like they're stepping things up. Hopefully, they keep with this and they do more of this stuff for more episodes. There are multiple scenarios in this story. It's kind of like multiple pieces of a story that they end up kind of weaving together. And I think they come together really well. This goes back to what I was saying, that Rob Schraub did a really good job with this script. It's tight. It moves. It's fun. It's funny. It's, it's all sorts of great things. I love it. There. Um, all right. So the last, my, my closing piece on this one. This one is insanely delightful. It has comedy, mayhem, gore, and ties in awesomely to a very beloved film franchise. 
So I know a lot of people when they see this one are going to hit the roof with how it's not only how it's executed, but the content of it and the tie-ins for it. People are going to love this. I, I'm sure there will still be some people who don't really like it. And for those people, I would love to hear in the comments why you don't like it. But I think you're going to have a lot of people loving this particular story. I was very happy with it. Like I said, it almost got my number one slot for all the stories that they've done on Creepshow. I love it. I'm going to give it a four-star rating at this point. So good start to the new season of Creepshow. So um, I'm hoping I can put out reviews for the episodes that are coming out each week because that's the way it is. No, it's April 1st, and then there's an April 8th, and it's just going to be one per week from there on out. So hopefully I'll have a review up every Monday, Monday or Tuesday of that week for the upcoming one, if I'm allowed to. If I'm not allowed to, because I, I haven't heard if they're going to allow people to release the stuff before it actually comes out on the Thursdays, um, I will just have it come out the day of. So we'll see. But anyway, this is a good start. Do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button, um, which, you know, it's, it takes like no time. It's like a second and it means a lot to me and the growth of this channel, which I'm just seeking to build this cool, nerdy horror community right here. Also hit the notification bell button because that way you'll know whenever I'm putting up new reviews like this or unboxing videos or any of that jazz. Um, yeah, and if you want to see my all my reviews for The Creep Show Season 1, I actually have those, uh, oh, and the special episodes. I also have those in one playlist on my channel. So you can look for that, and this will be incorporated into there as well. But thanks, everyone, for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.